to hello happy sabbath how are you guys friends good man happy sabbath it is a pleasure to see you uh, likewise i thank you thank you i was feeling bad now it's a pleasure thank to you me. you shouldn't need to be introduced but just so that is anyone still doesn't know who we are uh my name is pastor joel and i am surrounded by four colleagues and friends i have i don't know how you guys see them but i have at my left uh, or right, whatever, Pastor Josh. Hello, Pastor Josh. And then hello, Isai and Elia, pastors, wise people, awesome individuals. And we're here for another conversation on the Sabbath School. And we were kind of mentioning how this feels super ambitious, right? Not, not our conversations, but the, the weekly topics of study, right? So this week is language, text, and context before we move in guys any any anything that you can get out of your chest about this lesson anything that is pressing that you want to share hmm. pressing um i think th these are things that often are overlooked right um that maybe the casual uh reader might not think about uh, so I think this this lesson is gonna gonna introduce some things that might be new to us, uh, me, might be new to some of us, um, but I think they're very important, especially when it comes to interpreting. So, hmm. so Elia made a point earlier. Full disclosure: we discussed this before we record. Yeah, so gotta get on the Patreon. No, 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 no we don't. Episode. No, we don't. This is all imagined. <laughs> well, I'll try. I'm, I, I want to mention um, Elia, but if you want to like, kind of yeah. go off so, of what I was thinking. Um, this is an approach to studying the Bible that helps us relate it to other people before, or helps us to be able to study it before we share it with others. Yeah, you know, it's like it's it's like how Pastor Isai was saying. It's like without these um, without these tools that the lesson has given us about words, meaning, understanding scripture, and context and culture. You know, a lot of bad theology has been produced and been proclaimed because of that. You know, and because it's it's because of our misunderstanding of the text. The text might be saying something entirely different, but because we don't take time to really get into the word and, and look at its contents, look at the words it mean, what it meant back then, and other things like that. Yeah, we've sadly a lot of a lot of people have preached a lot of bad bad theology. So we have to. This is a really good opportunity uh, to understand how to study the scripture. These these key points. And I think uh, I want to kind of make an invitation to people that this is just a very like an introduction to it mm -hmm. you know there's books and so many different things on each of these different things um so you know if if uh, you're <laughs> if you're ever in in our area or if you're in el paso pass by pastor elliot's house he might let you borrow a commentary but i think we could probably we could probably continue on here <laughs> there you go i like that and i think that this is again this the point of all of this is not to say, oh, look at the Bible, how hard it is and how much you should listen to pastors because we do all this. Stuff. <laughs> it's simply, it's simply an invitation yeah. to realize how simple the text is, but how deep it can be at the same time, right? How, how deep simplicity and its beauty is. And the same way that no one would pretend, no one that is in a relationship would pretend they know everything there is to know about their loved one. Yeah. Right. And so, this, this is just an invitation, as you guys are saying beautifully, to, to get deep in and know this loved one that has given you a wonderful book. So with that being said, I think that's something that is very important to begin with. As we tackle all these <clears throat> maybe more technical aspects in, in how to, to properly or accurately share the Bible, is to understand what the purpose of the Bible is, right? Yeah. And so kind of to get us to begin with the Bible, um itself <clears throat> sorry let's go to second timothy then verses 16 and uh, chapter 3 verses 16 and 17. Mm -hmm. second Tim second timothy 3 16 and 17. does any of you want to read it yes i can read it awesome go for it go for it all right it says all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Awesome. So according to these texts, why do we have a Bible at all to begin with, right? What, what, what would you guys say about that? What, what's the purpose of this? 
Um, you know, I think I, I like it. Uh, I think yeah. David Ashwick, David Ashwick, uh -huh. uh, Pastor David Ashwick, he said it's like a love letter. I think yeah, I heard mm -hmm. one of his sermons. It's a love letter of God just trying to reveal his his unfailing mercy, unfailing love. I mean, so many different other things to us. Um, and it's really hard to ex like, it's really hard to, to show that, you know, when, when obviously he's in heaven. So this is just a, another way of him revealing not only through nature, but just through written word and through people's experience. I like that. I love that. You can definitely see the, the plan that, yeah. that God has laid out. Um, because he's just, he doesn't, you know, it's a love letter, but it's also like a, a rescue plan. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, this is how I'm about to do this. This is how I'm about to save you guys from, from the hole that you're in. Mm, that's awesome. I think going off of the love letter idea approach, when we read it as a love letter for him, then he loves us so much. He wants to teach us something, doctrine. Right? He wants to give us reproof, correction. He wants to correct us. Mm. He wants to instruct us in righteousness. And righteousness is to be right with him. Mm -hmm. And so, and then it says, why? So that the man of God may be complete. So, mm -hmm. so that we can be full in our, in, in our, in who we're meant to be. We can be wholly full. We can be mm -hmm. wholly who we're meant to be. And that's in your relationship mm -hmm. with him. I love it. it. It builds us up, right? So for me as a, as a father, and this may sound kind of cheesy, but the best way for me to understand the Bible um, is, is as, you know, let's say that I would, I knew beforehand that I was going to be absent for my daughter as she grew up, um, that I would write letters, not just to be close to her, but also prepare her for, the, for life and for the world that she will be facing as time went by. And I think it, 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 it gathers all the different elements of love and of building up and of sharing oneself and the story of, of giving a happy ending that is beautiful. So yeah. And so I think that this is so important because if you forget what the ultimate purpose of the bible is i think Elliot, you were talking about bad theology right so it's very easy to make bad theology uh, when you miss the intent and the purpose of what you're reading what you have in front of you right and and the lesson goes with you know hey it was written in hebrew a little bit of aramaic a little bit of greek so that tells us that this purpose is communicated through a language that is distant from us. So we need yeah. to study, we need to learn, we need to maybe get a little bit of help sometimes. Um, but again, all of these uh, studies and commentaries and what we call dead languages, because we don't use them anymore, are to be studied and understood through this lens of, this is a love letter that builds me up and tells me a story of redemption. Mm. And um, yeah, I think that that's a good way to get us started into all the, 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 the things we see after in the lesson, right? And then uh, if we jump down to like Monday, it talks about like the words and meanings, like how, how Pastor Joel was talking about, you know, the dead languages. And I know for sure in college, um, especially uh, studying uh, theology, we had to study the languages, Greek and Hebrew, luckily not Aramaic, but uh, definitely the language is beautiful. But studying them is a struggle. Like, oh my goodness. I think my class started out with like 15 people in the class. And by the end of the year, there's barely like seven or eight because it, it, it's hard. Like, it's very hard for those of you who have may have tried to study. It can feel like such a heavy burden just trying to understand it. But luckily, you know, that's why there's commentaries, the strong concordance. There are multiple things you can use at your disposal. Even logos, if you have it, Bible, uh, what is this, Bible Gateway, something like that. Uh, blue Letter Bible. Blue Letter Bible. One. Yeah. And all these words, man, when you, when you just stop for a moment, and you just want to have, like how Pastor Joe was saying, see through the lens of redemption. Like, man, some of these words are just so magnificent, the way God is described in the Bible. And, and one of the words that really impacted my life was when I was looking at Ephesians 3.20. Um, it's, it's a word called dunamai. And it means unto him who's able, like who's able, kind of. And, and as you're looking at this word dunamai in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, I was just, I stopped and I looked at the verb and and the sentence structure and, and it's amazing how much good theology you know or or just like or just how profound just the sentence of the bible is when you look at it, its original contents because like the the verb unto him who's able right the dunamai 
it's not all it's it's what we call a participle and for those of you who are really good with grammar which i'm not so i have to study even more you know it means like a continuous action something that's going to happen now and it will yeah. happen forever and so when i looked at the text and i just saw and i just saw a simple verb that it's continuous i realized in my heart my god is able now and forever like he's never going to stop being able in whatever circumstance i face you know and then it was even, it was just like unto him who was able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than I can ask for things. So like, like I can go even deeper with the word, but for the sake of time, you know, it's just, there's truly beauty in just the simplicity of a sentence in the Bible. And when we just take time and not, you know, I feel like so many times I've gone into the word of God to, to show and to exalt myself. Like, oh, I understand Greek now, so I'm better than you and I should be able to preach, you know. But like when I go into the word of God, just to see, see the God that loves me. And how he's trying to show me he loves me. Or see a God that wants to teach me and to make me whole. Man, these words in Greek and Hebrew and even Aramaic, man, they can, they can go deep. And I encourage you, you know, talk to your pastor about different tools. Or even ask your pastor to teach you Greek and Hebrew. Pastor Josh can. So, amen. There you go. <laughs> um, I can't, but maybe, maybe the Lord will. Maybe the Lord can. Uh, the lesson I know did mention two words there um, that are pretty interesting. Um, I don't know. I don't know if y'all had some thoughts on those words that it that it used there in Hebrew. I wasn't good at, at Hebrew. That was probably the. Uh, was I could probably teach you a little bit of Greek, but Hebrew that was in my thing. But I don't. I don't know if you want to touch on those things real quick. I actually want to share. Um, there, the word that there one of the words was uh, shalom, right? And often we mm -hmm. think of you know the sense of shalom being peace, which. It definitely is, but it's not limited to, you know, mm -hmm. peace um, in the sense of no war, absence of war, but in completeness in God, in who, in, mm -hmm. in relationship with, in who he wants us to be and finding fulfillment in that. And I was reading, um, it's crazy how scripture works, how God works through scripture, right? I was um, studying this morning in Romans chapter five, mm -hmm. and it's just a beautiful, deep passage. I just want to read Romans 5, verse 1. It says, Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace mm. with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Shalom. And so I was actually studying the lesson before I studied this passage, and it just, it just opened it up for me because then I thought, like, it's not just like, oh, you know, like peace of mind or it's not just like there's no war, there, but we have peace with God because of what Christ our Lord has done for us. And that really put in perspective what Jesus has done for us. And it's just like this overwhelming amount of gratitude when I realize, wow, I have peace. I can have peace. Like this is something, and all I, like, then this, well, this passage is saying is, since we have been right, made right with God, by our faith, we are given peace. Mm -hmm. And it just opens it up for me. So that's just one little takeaway from just the word peace, right? Study of peace. But it, it, just puts a, it just puts it in such a bigger picture, such a broader understanding of it. And, and that's, that's what the lesson is just trying to show. It's just from really trying to just reveal to you, whoever may be watching, that, man, just take time with the scripture. Like, enjoy it. And, and don't, don't just compare it. Like it, it shows with peace, it gives you multiple verses. So what you can do is you see a word and you don't maybe understand its context. So read another word. And that's where you use the, the, what is it called? It's called the uh, concordance. concordance. Yeah. And you compare word and then you start to understand its fullness, what the word just means with, yeah. with its complete context. And, and don't, don't rush through it. I think that a lot of times we, we have gotten used to reading Mm. that maybe don't make much sense but we kind of assume we know what it says and there are a lot of precious gems hitting in it right so mm. so if you don't understand something or if something seems a little oh man this seems silly or it seems like nothing maybe dig again right look again because you, you you're likely to discover a lot more than you thought exactly i think you know this is kind of where this lesson really this quarter last few weeks right it's building up one on another something that i remember saying earlier i think it was last week is you know we really need to dwell on the passage before we just you know take someone else's word for it or just you know mm. 
read and get like just a surface level understanding of it. Another thing that we can point out from scripture or understand from scripture as we're studying it is what key words stand out to us? What is something that maybe recognizing that this love letter that God gave to us, that although written by, you know, by pen, by man, that there are certain words that in the literature sense of it, of, you know, this letter, the literature behind it, there is a certain intentionality with the format, the phrasing, the, and I, and I forget, you know, the, the literature terminology, but the way that it's phrased, the way that it's put, whether you're reading a psalm or whether you're reading in Genesis, there's, there's intentionality behind sentence structure, word choices. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes we, the words that we get in the English translation are just not rich and dip, deep enough. Um, and that's why we were mentioning, right, studying the key words and study, finding the, the, maybe the original language. But I think even in the English, we find certain words that stand out to us as we're studying it. Maybe when we're reading along, one mm. practical tip that we can take is underline or highlight words that stand out to you. Mm. And then look back and see, what did, what did God just tell me? Um, if someone would... I want to, oh, uh, if I could add just this one thing for sure. I think we talked about it last week a little bit, but of uh, various translations now. Yeah. Like there's different patterns and different things that we might not recognize just reading maybe our, you know, a New King James or NIV. Yeah. But depending on who is interpreting what, uh, what uh, translation, sometimes if, that's why it's so important to take a pra this practical tip of, um, highlighting these different things, but also seeing how other translations are are uh, um, interpreting these things because, you know, there isn't just a word for word because if, if you guys ever done this, and I've done this because I struggle with my Spanish sometimes, if you put Spanish in, in Google Translate, like, you get some crazy translations and stuff. Um, so that's just one practical tip I want to give. Read a, a various translations for sure. Absolutely. That is so practical. Thank you. That's so true. Um, if someone could read for us the next um, verse, uh, John 13, 34 and 35. Yeah, I got it. Uh, just, just as we're reading this, just try to hear for what key word is, you know, either repeated or stands out. So here's John 13, 34 to 35, correct? Yes. Okay. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Hmm. Love one <laughs> another. <laughs> right. What is it that stands out? Love, love, love. Love, 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 love. I think it's said four times. Mm -hmm. um, and we could get we could start a whole word study discussion. But when we approach scripture and recognize, oh, there's love, there's love, there's love. Jesus is saying something to us there that we, sh we shouldn't miss, that we should hold on to. We should be, you know, really hone in on that. And so whatever, whether it's a word that's being repeated or, you know, there's a, a thought that is being yeah. developed, lean into that. And I think that, sorry, just to kind of jump in really fast, that can happen across books. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, another lesson mentions Isaiah, right? So in Isaiah 1, there's a lot of woes, right? Through the book of Isaiah, especially from 1 to 5 to 6, woe to you, woe to you, woe to you, you know, uh, the prophet criticizing and calling out rightfully um, the religious class of his time. And then he gets into the temple, he says, woe to me, right? Which is kind of cool in Isaiah. But then jumping to Jesus, I think it's either... I think Matthew 25 or 26, that there's a bunch of woes from Jesus to the religious leaders of his time, which for, for the, the listeners of Jesus will be like, hey, this is a clear echo to Isaiah, right? To us, it kind of gets missed in translation because we don't read Isaiah as much as they did, or we don't have it as fresh. But it's really cool to see these words popping up throughout scriptures, echoing each other, yeah. and, and and giving us highlights in the story that are meaningful as well, right? Yeah, that's good. That just opens it up. Mm -hmm. It opens it up. That's, that's so good. And I think that, I mean, that just reminds me of, you know, an earlier study, scripture interprets scripture, 
right? Mm -hmm. So I think when we're, we're studying scripture, we're definitely, you know, looking at the big picture of the story of scripture. Yeah. yeah. Something else that, um, that, the, that the lesson talks about, another approach to studying scripture is looking at the text and the context of it. A lot of times people could find, and I know we've touched on this just like briefly before, but you could find a word or a phrase from somewhere. And then if you want, you can make the Bible say something else by putting it next to something else. Or you could try to, you know, oh, take a, a phrase from a verse out of the big context of the culture and situation and the story and assume that God is saying something else to us. So before we, you know, take one verse and try to develop a whole doctrine or a whole misunderstanding of it, you know, one thing that we can definitely do is read the whole context, read the whole chapter, read the whole book mm -hmm. and get the big picture. Yeah. Look at, look at what the, what the original audience was. Look at who, yeah. why this, why this book, this letter was written in the first place. And it just opens up the intent of the verse. Absolutely. It's interesting, right? That there's so much. I think this is so crucial to a lot of the back theology discussions that we have. Mm. And our church as Adventist is still battling women's ordination uh, to a huge extent because of a lack of understanding of the context of a lot of these things. Um, you know, when the Bible talks about slavery and Paul says, you know, sl Christian slaves should be good slaves. No one is like, oh, this means we can have slaves and they need to behave, right? But then when Paul says women should be quiet, um, we take it and be like, oh, this applies to 21st century Texan, no questions asked, you know, which tells me that we're still, we're still victims of our own context and of our own limitations. But we should try to scriptures, freeing it from that and understanding, okay, what is, what is actually being conveyed? Why, why would Paul say anything like that, right? Mm -hmm. And, and we have, you know, in the past, we have talked about our own biases and sometimes our biases prevent us from being able to, to see the context and the reason why some things are being said or done in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. And um, I know the lesson gets a little bit talking about creation and stuff. And I know in the, in the later lesson, it's going to get deeper into it. Um, but it's important to just pay attention and kind of like reason through some of the things because for example it talked about how it mentions adam and again uh adam means man but also adama uh it said something that it means ground the dust of the ground too so there's a lot of wordplay going on and there's a lot of poetic language in in the narrative of of uh of the first few chapters of genesis that you know at times we might we might not understand yet but it's important to just look at and think about okay, what is what is the Bible trying to say here? What is the author trying to say here? And I think we get a really nice picture um, of what of what it's trying to paint for us, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, with that, I think we could probably move on to one uh, one of the other things that um, the lesson, and this is on Thursday's uh, lesson. It talks about books and uh, their messages. Okay. So as we know, the Bible was written by many various types of authors in various types of language. Um, but we need to see the types of books, right? We also need to, because we can read the Bible, right, as one book, and we know that, it's, that there's a unity to it, but there's variety in it as well, right? There's, you know, the historical books, right, that we can look at, you know, in, in different ways and see the different stories and the different details, right, that are given. Um, we can look at the Psalms, right, and these are poetic books. Often they were accompanied by, by music, right? So if I read, you know, for example, Chronicles, um, First Chronicles, and then if I go, you know, to Daniel, a prophetic book, right, which has some history in there as well, like, I might, I, 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 it's almost like I need to switch mindsets a little bit, right? So that, you know, I don't interpret, you know, maybe a prophetic thing, right? In a sense of like, oh, this is, this is something that happened, right? There was a literal beast, right? That, that Daniel saw, right? 
and it's just it, we need to have it's almost like we need to change lenses for a moment right and um because that's the thing i think there's bad interpretations because i can get one little verse from maybe chronicles or kings right and and say oh this is prophetic right or even and i think there's been some things like that uh but what do you what do you guys think about the about the various books and, and looking to the authors and looking to the styles of writing what any thoughts on that you know i i think i think some books are like uh like a, like their testimony almost you know how david wrote a lot of the psalms and, and you see his experience and, and you know that some things are metaphors other things are just illustrations and other things you know it's turned out to be very prophet uh, prof, uh what do you say a prophetic yeah very prophetic and and when i like i like about i like about the various books and their messages and, and the different authors is that i get a, a different perspective every single time you know i get to see god from this angle and it's not the same as this guy's angle and it's not the same as this guy's angle everybody's giving their own different interpretation like no one ever had to go through what hosea had to go through you know like um that that's that's just a whole new idea but he saw a a side of God that no one else has ever seen. And so when I have all these different books, it's like all these guys saw God in part, but now I get to see God in a way fuller perspective. And I'll never be able to see God in his, in his wholeness, you know, that he just, he's just too powerful. He's just all, almighty, you know. But when I look at the Bible in its fullness, you know, and I look at the Bible through these people's lenses, man, I see a God that they probably didn't see that I get to see now. Oh, for sure. I like it. What about Joel or Isai? What do y'all think about the, the the differences between the books? I, I love it. I think that I think that uh, one you know, I was <laughs> thinking more maybe of the problematic side of this, right? Where sometimes okay. sometimes people try to yeah. you know interpret a historical book as prophetic, right? Or or for example, even if we, if we look at the development of the canon, uh, some books made people uncomfortable, right? Because they didn't feel like they belong, how they belong. Mm -hmm. Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon, right? Did they have a hard time with First John, Second John? They had a hard time with those. I think they had, yeah. I know they had trouble with Esther for sure as well. Yeah. I think that, you know, it, it's important to, again kind of going back to the beginning for me at least right to understand what the purpose what the point of the book is what the feel of the book is so that you don't read into it things that that don't necessarily apply well i mean this is a very adventist comment right but we have a an independent ministry a person that is very well known in adventist circles that came out with funky dates to a big extent out of not really following and respecting the intent of dates and, and, and stories that are given in the Bible and taking them as something else, right? And it's all very exciting when you do it, but we have to remember that, that if we are calling ourselves people of the book, we need to be respectful of the book, you know, and not, not toy with it. Oh, for sure. For sure. I think we could kind of, conclude on on this idea a little bit more um but the lesson pointed us to the book of genesis mm. and um my I, I think that the bible doesn't make sense without the book of genesis mm. um so many of the themes because a lot of the themes that are are found through the historical book the historical books the the psalms the gospels um, the letters and all these different things, a lot of the themes are found in Genesis. Um, and, and I think that, and, and as we see the next couple of weeks, we're going to, we're going to focus a little bit more on, on Genesis. Um, but I kind of wanted to conclude a little bit with this um, is, is how, what are, what's so important? What do y'all think is so important? Um, why is Genesis such a foundational book and, and why should we, in what way should we see it? Because, mm. for example, the first couple chapters, right, with this up to like Genesis up to 11, it, it goes really, really fast, right? And a lot mm. of people might say, oh, a lot of these things aren't literal. But how should we look at the book of Genesis? And we could probably conclude with, with this. Uh, you know, I, for me, for me, I see, 
I see how my story began or how, how it should have began. You know, I look at that aspect. I looked at everything was good. Shalom. There was peace. There was rest. My day begins with rest from evening to morning. You know, there was no hustle, man. There was no, there was no worry. They're just walking with God. And that's how my story began. But because of my mistakes and because Adam fell, you know, my story goes into this. And you just see right after the kid out of the Garden of Eden, I was studying this morning, like Cain just just kills his brother. Look at look at the, sh- the steep contrast between with God and without God, hmm. you know. And so I see with Genesis, I see how my story began. And then because of Genesis, because of how it began, I'll see how it finishes. Because God gives a promise in that covenant. You know, in just the first, like, three chapters, he gives that promise that I'm going to bring you back. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to restore so this. So good, dude. And so for so me, that, that's why Genesis is so important. I see my story beginning, and I see how it ends. And really, the plan of salvation, the plan of salvation that mm. we, we were thought of, that, we, that he, he had a plan for, for us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and and I, I could just add one more thing. It's right. like it's like we just think righteousness by faith happened in the New Testament, right? But Genesis proves without a shadow of doubt righteousness has been fed by faith since the beginning of time. That Adam and Eve were having to live by faith. It's not if just if you only listen to the if you only listen to the rest of the the podcast or the you get on the Patreon, <laughs> the tears start at fifty dollars. <laughs> right. but that's, that's what i'm saying bro like the old covenant that, that's just nonsense it's like the the covenant god established was always righteousness by faith mm-hmm. so every single my whole life ever genesis tells me how to live tells me how to walk it's just it all begins with genesis it's so fire man i love that book and even before genesis come on man yeah yeah now i was gonna say at the risk of ruining this beautiful conclusion no um my <laughs> My daughter has a series of books. They're called uh, Quantum Physics for Babies. Mm. This is more from the technical side, I guess, of, of the book. Wow. Right? But, wow. That's um, yeah. So what I would say is, you know, there's a lot of debate, you know, and then creation, evolution, and what does it say? How does it work? And, and I would say, you know, the best way that I make sense of the technicalities that seem so out there and confusing and uncertain is that this is very much an equivalent to my daughter's quantum physics book, right? Is it false? No, it's not, right? The, the, when I open and read the, the book to my daughter, it is true. There is truth in what has been explained to a two-year-old. Now, it is, all, is it all the truth? No. It is true that is made accessible to a two-year-old. Mm-hmm. Limited, and it is processed to be able to be received by her little brain. Um, I would encourage us to, I think for me, a lot of the, a lot of the technical difficulties in approaching the book of Genesis make sense when you remember that this is God trying to tell you how he made you, right? Don't expect for God to be telling you all the details in the way that you can pretend that you know and master, you know? Yeah. Uh, this is quantum physics for a two-year-old. This is creation <laughs> for spiritual two-year-olds, you know? <laughs> but yeah. Wow. That was awesome, guys. Well, I just want to conclude with a blessing here. May you be blessed as you look into the story and as you find yourself in the story of Jesus, that you may get to know him more day by day through the scriptures. And just how Pastor Eliab said, we see the perfection there. May you be a part of that restoration when Jesus comes back. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you guys next week once again. Again, there is no Patreon, but if you guys want to send us $50, we're cool with it. Uh, We'll we'll, we'll have a We'll We'll get fired. We'll get fired. (laughs) 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 All right. Love you guys.